Now we as low carbers tend to think that glucotoxicity, carbs are the main cause of insulin resistance. Dr. Shulman has clearly shown, and I think that this is the accurate picture, that it is lipotoxicity that causes insulin resistance. With lipotoxicity, you get convert the fat inside the cells to ceramides and diacylglycerol, and this prevents intracellular insulin signaling so that you cannot recruit the group four channels through which you can take in glucose. In addition, the toxic fat damages your mitochondria. The mitochondria don't burn cleanly. They make a lot of free radicals. The cell gets energy starved, inflamed, and dies. Now let's turn our liver as to how liver interfaces with food. In the setting of fasting, the liver is charged with the main responsibility of supplying the brain with fuel. Our brain refuses to fast. It needs a certain amount of food all the time. And so amino acids from muscle breakdown and glycerol from fat breakdown is converted in the liver through a process called gluconeogenesis to provide what is called hepatic glucose output for the brain. In addition, the fatty acids get taken up by the mitochondria and the liver. And because insulin levels are low when you're fasting, they, convert, they get converted to ketones, which is fuel for the brain. When you eat a meal, glucose is coming in. The liver can use what it needs and then store it as glycogen. And because glucose is coming in, hepatic glucose output should get shut down. However, in the setting of insulin resistance, the insulin cannot recruit the GLUT4 channels. The amino acids from fat breakdown and the glycerol from lipolysis continue to be taken up by the liver. And in the midst of plenty of food coming in, the liver puts out glucose when it shouldn't. It also jacks up the fat manufacturing machinery to become fatty. The fatty acids that are picked up by the liver get out, cannot get converted to ketones because of high insulin levels. And the liver spews out these triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. Now, I have several patients who tell me, Doc, I have had a marginally elevated hemoglobin A1C for about 10 to 15 years. It means nothing. But what they need to realize is that it takes two to three decades of a fatty pancreas before you progress to type 2 diabetics, type 2 diabetes. But the fatty pancreas initially is actually making more insulin. But phase one insulin response, what that means is that when there is a slight shift in glucose, the pancreas squirts an amount of insulin into the vicinity and it reduces glucagon production. That is gone. I've been accused of being a little nerdy, so that was a little nerdy fact. <laughs> now, Lydia Shishipank has shown that as you progress from normal to obesity to type 2 diabetes or uh, pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes, the amount of fat in your pancreas goes up. So here is a study that has looked at obese men and women and compared them to lean controls. You can see that the body mass index of obese men and women is similar. They are higher than the lean controls. However, women are blessed. And the reason I say that is because for the same BMI, the men had more visceral fat, had higher liver and pancreatic fat content. They were also more insulin resistant, as evidenced by high fasting insulin and high HOMA IR scores. And this was accompanied by them having lower levels of the healthy fat hormone called adiponectin, as well as leptin and they had higher markers, blood markers of liver disease. Now one does not need to get into their 40s 
to get lipotoxicity. This is a study in teenage Mexican-American girls, 16 or 17, and you find that when their weight goes up, they become insulin resistant. And not only do they get insulin resistant, but muscle fat, liver fat, and pancreatic fat goes up dramatically even at this young age.